All right, Alexander, we did a video, I believe two days ago, on um, Italy and the recovery fund and uh, how Italy is now looking like it's heading into big trouble. It's going to either need more austerity via the ESM or it's going to need Christine Lagarde and the ECB to print more euros. Either way, it's not looking good for Italy. But today, things got worse for Italy, in my opinion. And I don't think this is a coincidence that this news came out today. Let me read you the title. Matteo Salvini, Italy's far-right leader, loses his parliamentary immunity. That's coming from Euronews, so a very pro Euro site is saying Italy's far right leader loses his parliamentary immunity. Alexander, this is no coincidence that they're trying to take out Salvini at this moment in time because Italy is about to crumble. It's going to head into austerity in one form or another, and the government will collapse. The current government will collapse. My hunch is that they want to take out Salvini, and when the government does collapse, they're just going to replace it with another. EU centric crony globalist government to continue along the same lines that they have been continuing with Italy over the past 10, 15 years. Well, to answer your question, it is absolutely not a coincidence. Uh, uh, Conte, Giuseppe Conte, the Italian prime minister, came back from this extraordinary meeting, the EU meeting, to a hero's reception. Everybody said, you know, he's achieved the great Hamilton moment for the EU. And then, of course, reality breaks in. Italy will have to pay more to the EU than it's getting back. And it turns out that it's also facing a massive fiscal crisis um, at the end of this year when all kinds of debts mature, which it has to repay and it doesn't have the money for. And as you absolutely rightly say, it's got to turn to the to Christine Lagarde to save them or to the ESM and the Troika and the austerity and all that to save them. And they are in huge trouble. So what do you do when you're in trouble? You go for the person who might uh, potentially be a threat to you politically within your own country. You go for the country's most popular politician. You go for the person who is skeptical, openly skeptical, about more than just skeptical, you know, absolutely, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, the hostile to the, all of these integrationist steps that are being taken in Italy, which, you know, to in, merge Italy further with the EU, which, as I said, are about to fail. You go after Salvini. You use the legal system in Italy, which is, by the way, has a long history in Italy of being used in this fashion against political leaders who step out of line with the political elite. So that's exactly what they've done. They, they've just done that. And by the way, the case against him is, in my opinion, a nonsensical one. It's supposed to be a kidnapping case. It's all because he wouldn't allow some immigrants when he was home, I Italian interior minister to come into Italy. And, by that, and he did that whilst he was in coalition with Giuseppe Conte and the Five Star Movement, which is, of course, the Italian government now. So the case is a ludicrous one. It's clearly intended to get Salvini out of the picture at a time when the Italian government and the Europeanist elite in Italy feel that the whole thing is crumbling around them. And you're absolutely right. The expectation, I am sure, is that the government will collapse in the autumn. And I already can guess who the next intended prime minister is. It's going to be Renzi, who was, of course, the prime minister of the Democratic Party, the arch-Europeanist, the person who um, the Five Star Movement and, uh, um, you know, Salvini's Northern League, they were the people who won the election against. But he's clearly been maneuvered and prepared to take over come November when the crisis hits. Yeah. All right. Well, let me read you about the case real quick, Alexander, from Euro News. Once again, prosecutors in the Sicilian city of Palermo accused Salvini of abusing his powers as then interior minister in August 2019 to prevent the Spanish NGO Open Arms ship from docking in Lampedusa. The rescue vessel was marooned at sea for nearly three weeks 
with more than 150 migrants on board. He insisted the decision to stop migrants from getting off the ship until a deal was reached with EU countries to take them in was reached collectively within the government. So that's the case that they're using against Salvini to lock him up and prevent him from leading Italy and getting someone like Renzi to lead Italy and to once again put Italy back under the austerity of the European Union. Well, exactly. And I mean, does that sound to you like a kidnapping case? I mean, he's just getting, he wants to consult with the other members of his government before before he lets these people come come ashore does that sound like a kidnapping case it certainly doesn't sound like that to me but obviously this is again the use of the law for a political end which is to keep Salvini out of power it seems to me that the entire political system in Italy now has only one objective left which is to keep Salvini out of power they are terrified that if Salvini becomes Prime Minister of Italy, and remember he's the most popular politician in Italy, then of course the whole game with the European Union in Italy is over. That may still happen, you know, all these operations and intrigues and plots, they're quite likely to make Salvini stronger, but it will depend to some extent on him. But regardless of that, the objective behind this is totally transparent yeah this is the same playbook they used against uh, marine le pen actually to me that's what it sounds like there's also Euronews says that salvini's uh opposition league party remains the most popular in italy but it has been sliding in opinion polls a demopolis survey this week found it has dropped over 11 points in a year that's coming once again from Euronews, obviously the mouthpiece of the european union the european union I mean, they don't they don't screw around. They play hardball. No, I mean, can I just say, I mean, the the Conte government got a, a, a boost from the pandemic crisis, its handling of the pandemic crisis for some strange reason. It made them more popular. I'm not sure why, but it did. And um, at the same time, they've obviously been able to entangle Salvini in all these issues. Now, I think that as the pandemic recedes in Italy, or all as people start to wake up to the fact that their government didn't handle the pan pandemic so well. And as people start to focus instead again on the overriding issue of the European Union, you will see those polls that you've just been quoting, which may not be entirely accurate anyway, that they will reverse very quickly. So we will see interesting times in Italy, interesting times in Rome and people in brussels and berlin and frankfurt and paris will be watching very closely and you can be quite sure that there'll be lots of telephone conversations going on between you know christine lagarde and conte and uh conte and merkel and renzi and merkel renzi and merkel got on very well by the way they were great pals so we could be very interesting to see what how, how things how things shape out but about this particular case about the reasons for this particular case no one should be in any doubt yeah the one thing the european union will not allow happen in italy the one thing they will prevent at all costs is democracy well indeed i mean the fact of the, the fact of the matter is this is becoming an increasingly authoritarian operation because it is not based on democratic consent we were talking about this in another pro program we did just recently. They they tried to commit people in Germany to uh, you know underwriting Italy's debt. People in Germany have never agreed to that. So when you do that, when you when you behave in that way, inevitably you become increasingly authoritarian, and that's what Salvini is facing now. All right, we'll be following this story closely. Alexander Berkers, right. thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Also, drop us a comment as well. We really enjoy reading your comments. And please donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe. Star, your donation really helps out this small channel a lot. So we can continue to report real news and take on the fake news like Euronews, which is reporting pretty much as Brussels tells them to report. And go to the Durant shop, pick up some merchandise. We've got all kinds of magic mugs. We've got all kinds of new shirts and all kinds of new apparel. Alexander has the U.S. mug. We also have an Italy mug as well, Alexander. We, do we have indeed. launched an we Italy mug. Do.
Absolutely, and uh, you know we we're trying to, and indeed, and you know this is this is Australia, and this I this is um, I think I showed you before. This is the U.S. and this is Britain, but we have many others, and they are the world's best mugs, and they've just got better, and um, some of them are now enameled, which look and they look fantastic, and um, you can find them with lots of different flags of different countries. And if you're missing your own country, they'll perhaps wait a little because more are coming of all, you know, of other countries too. But if you st you're still go there, you can't find it in a short time, just drop us a line and we'll see about sorting one out for you. So uh, we've got these amazing mugs. We've got our amazing shirts. We've got, you know, a wonderful new catalogue of shirts. Alex is wearing one of the new shirts, which you can see there, this beautiful blue colour there with the... Uh, a double headed eagle of the Duran, that's our own symbol. And you will also find our, you know, various other products in our shop our, our hats, hoodies, stickers, and our expanding gallery of ebooks. And also, please remember our friends at Patriotic Legacy, the Patriot Beacon, the best flashlight in the world, without any question. It's got an amazing beam, which you can see there. You can dim it, lift you, you've got people around you. You can have it flashing if you need to alert people to where you are. If you get lost, you've got your compass there in the handle. Um, if you want to recharge your iPhone or your laptop, well, you've got the uh, uh, port there, the USB port. It's, there's, it's solar powered, so it never uh, fades on you. And of course, it's also an amazing tool you can use it. You can use it as a hammer or you can use this to break a windscreen. If you have to cut out somebody who's in a car, we've, we've even got a, a seatbelt cutter there. But the other thing about this, this flashlight is it just handles beautifully. It's beautifully made. It's incredibly strong. It's amazingly rugged. It looks stunning. It's made in the United States by our friends at Patriotic Legacy, but it ships all over the world. It's the Patriot Beacon, and Alex will tell you at the end of how you can get yourself one. Yeah, you will find a link for the Patriot Beacon 3 and the Patriotic Legacy website, which has all kinds of great stuff. Underneath this video in the description box down below, there's also a 20% discount when you use the code DURAN20 at checkout. So put that uh, code in at checkout and you'll get 20% on anything you order from the Patriotic Legacy website. Also go to the DuranShop.com. You will find a link for that as well underneath this video in the description box. Alexander Mercurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.